Challenge Roger's been such a success, FTV would like you to do another show. Well, I've got a great idea for a new show, and it's dirt cheap. Yes. All we need is a pack of cards, a box of laxatives, and a bird with big tits. Forget it, Roger. I've already got something in mind for you to do this week. Roger Crook has been beaten up again while filming his hard-hitting, no-nonsense investigative documentary show, The Crook Report. So we want you to take over. The Crook Report. Brilliant. Let's get started right away. Now, before you rush into this, Roger, remember this is investigative TV journalism. It's about righting wrongs and exposing criminals. You'll come face to face with some pretty nasty characters and things might get a little rough at times. No sweat, Tom. I'm no soft touch. I can take the rough with the smooth. I can mix it a bit myself if I have to. No fucker messes with me. I can look after myself, Tom. Pass the word around. In fact, I'm a little bit tasty, you know what I mean? <coughs> Hit the fucker first. Ask questions later. The best form of defence is attack. You know that. I know that. Come on, Tom. Let's go get them. Uh, yes, Roger, but remember, we want to avoid trouble whenever possible. We want to ask questions, that's all. Just questions, OK, Roger? Right, Roger, we're investigating the slum landlord who owns this building. I want you to go in, take a look around, and interview a few of the tenants. OK, Tom, here we go. I'll lead the way. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Parker lives here. She's 84 and lives alone. The landlord's been trying to evict her, and so she's very scared. You'll have to be tactful. Leave it to me, Tom. I'll have a word with her. Freddy, when you are. Mrs. Parker! Hello? Mrs. Parker! Who is it? What do you want? This is Roger Melly from the Melly Report. I'd like to have a word with you, if I may, Mrs. Parker. I'm sorry. I'm not very well. Please go away. Have you got something to hide, Mrs. Parker? I've got a few questions that need answering, Mrs. Parker. Steady on, Roger. Mrs. Parker's an innocent victim in this case, remember? It's no use, Tom. She's locked the door. But don't worry. I'll sort it out. Yeah? I know you're in there, Mrs. Parker. Ah, there you are, Mrs. Parker. I wonder if I could just ask you a few questions. Help! Get out! Leave me alone! Please go away. Look, don't fuck with me, Mrs. Parker. Our viewers want certain answers from you. <coughs> Roger! Oh, for heaven's sake! For God's sake, get them out of ya. Come on, Roger. Just calm down. We'll go outside. Come on. No one fucks me about, Tom. Just take it easy. Can we get you a nice cup of tea, Mrs. Parker? Mrs. Parker? Roger, you've got to be calm, sympathetic and tactful at all times. Do you understand? I'm with you, Tom. Message received. I know what you're saying. You want me to try the softly, softly approach. That's it, exactly. We're going to have a word with the landlord next. He's called Mr Mackenzie. No problem, Tom. I'll nail that bastard, don't you worry. Now then, Roger, Mr Mackenzie's in that cafe across the road. Roger, what's that? this? Oh, it's just a bit of insurance, Tom, in case things turn nasty. Don't worry, I won't use it unless I have to. Give that to me. You can't go around hitting people with a lump of lead pipe, you bloody idiot. Mm -hmm. Now hurry up. Mr Mackenzie will be leaving the cafe any minute now. Ask him about Mrs Parker. OK, Tom, will do. Now remember, be polite but persistent. Go on, Roger. I know you can do it. <laughs> I got the bastard, Tom. That's not the landlord. That's Mr. Mackenzie over there. Oi! I want a word with you. What is it? We're from the Melly Report, and we'd like to ask you a few questions about a certain Mrs. Parker, if we may. Does that name mean anything to you, Mr. Mackenzie? Parker? No, I don't recall anyone by that name. Well, perhaps I can refresh your memory, Mr. Mackenzie. You've been trying to evict Mrs. Parker from her flat. I've seen that flat, and frankly, I don't think it's fit for human habitation. Would you live there, Mr. Mackenzie? Sorry, I have no comment. Uh, you'll have to talk to my solicitor. It's a pity your tenants can't afford solicitors, isn't it, Mr. Mackenzie? <coughs> ah, look, Mr. Mackenzie, it's the police. Perhaps you'd rather talk to them.
I dare say you'll be living in pretty squalid conditions yourself from now on, Mr. Mackenzie. In prison! OK, boys, he's all yours. Take him away. Well, that's another villain bang to rights. This is Roger Melly for the Melly Report, signing off. Are you all right, Mr. Mackenzie? And don't forget to tune in next week for another... Mr. Melly, I'm arresting you for assault, breaking and entering, and behaviour likely to cause a breach of the peace. You have the right to remain silent. However, anything you say will be... Bollocks! Fucking hell, Tom. 250 quid fine. I was only doing my job. It's a bloody police state, that's what it is. Never mind that now, Roger. Are you familiar with whose line is it now? Um... The improvisational comedy show for highbrow people. Oh, yeah, that's the one where that baldy bastard rings a bell and everyone has to say a word and then guess what his job is, something like that. No, 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 Roger. You're thinking of something else. This is a show where Clive Sanderson invites talented comedy stars and actors to improvise humorous sketches and scenarios on the spot. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, I know that one. Anyway, multi-talented acting genius Kenneth Spanner has had to drop out of this week's show in order to perform a pioneering heart bypass operation at a top hospital. We're desperate for a replacement. Will you do it, Roger? Places, everyone. Are we ready to roll? Hey, hang on a minute. I haven't seen the script yet. No, Roger, that isn't a script. That's the whole point. It's spontaneous improvisation. You just make it up as you go along. Oh, it's, uh, it's that, is it? Oh, right, right, I'm with you. OK, um, so what's my first line? Oh, Christ. Forget lines and scripts, Roger. Just watch the others. You'll soon get the hang of it. And action! Hello, and welcome to the show that makes Homer's Odyssey look like a Greek tragedy. Hey. Tonight's guests are Ed Lardstein, Joseph Florence, John Nations and Roger Milley. So, without further ado, let's go on to our first game, in the style of... I'm going to ask Roger and John to improvise a scene in which a man visits the dentists in the style of a Sheridan Restoration comedy. You what? Aha, uh -huh. uh, methinks, a uh, forsooth, perchance, that ye hath cometh verily for a check-up. Tom, what the fuck is he on about? Cut! He's improvising, Roger. You have to do the shame. I know all that, but he's got a fucking script. I haven't. Please, Roger, bear with us. If you just sit for a while and watch the others, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. And now I'm going to ask each of you to improvise a verse in the style of a poet of your choice. So, if you'd like to go first, John, and can we have a poem about a lemon squeezer, please? I'll do it in the style of the 18th century French poet, in the word La Pagiere, donnez-moi a squeeze, avec son squeezer. Yes, well worth 50 points there. Now we'll make it 100. Right, Roger, your turn. I'd like you to draw a poem about changing a light bulb <laughs> in the style of a poet of your choice. When you're ready. OK, um, I'll, I'll do it in the style of Muhammad Ali. Brilliant, Roger. Oh, great choice. I knew you'd get the hang of it eventually. <coughs> Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Take that, you little Scottish 